Oh, that was mutual. Catch. I've got to warn you, my catch. Subscribe. Prepare for takeoff. <laughs> Your fire episode will get here, here, and here. <laughs> Just in case. I know. And if it does go seriously wrong. Would it put it past us? Yeah. If I accidentally say the F word again, my <laughs> accent is that window. <laughs> uh, welcome to everybody who's watching online on the Highlights Show. Our first guest today is Emma Gilmore. Hello. Emma is a runner for Victoria Park Athletic Club. She's competed in cross country and run 1,500 and 3,000 3, metres on track. She's been doing it for eight years and doesn't look like slowing down anytime soon. Welcome to the show, Emma. Thank you for having me. And your sport is running. Best place to start is, where did, how did you get into the sport? Well, it was NP6 that started. I have always been sported growing up. Um, my family really sporty family. And I remember there was a letter given out for a primary school's cross country in P6 and I decided to do it and I just kind of loved it straight off the bat and then I did a few of them and then joined the athletics club that I'm part of at the end of P6 I'm pretty sure it was and it's just kept going since then yeah. So you're running for Victoria Park Athletics Club, how's events been going this year? Okay, I mean I've missed a few years because like, I've been injured and had exams and stuff yeah. And this year I'm getting back into it. Track season was okay. But I do for cross country. Uh, the cross country so far is going well. I mean, we've only had three races so far, but um, yeah, so far so good. I'm getting back into it. Glad to hear your next event is the National Cross Country Relays on Saturday. How are you feeling heading into this event? I'm feeling okay. I mean, I'm now in the senior event because I'm under 20 because of my age and at relays we were put with the seniors so it was like everyone above under uh, 17 upwards. Uh, I'm in the B team for the relay, thank goodness I'm not in the A team because <laughs> <laughs> mm, probably not go so well but uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's a good course, it's quite hilly and I, I'm better on the hills so yeah, should be good fun. So for this kind of events what would you say is your pre-run meal that you'd have before you? Digestive biscuits. Yeah, uh, yeah honestly I have about three or four because they're not, they're not heavy, but they do fill you up. Otherwise, right. I don't want to throw up halfway in a course. No. <laughs> Fair enough. It's probably not a good thing. So, yeah. So definitely this? not a full English breakfast. No, <laughs> no, no definitely, definitely not. not. Definitely <laughs> not. <laughs> it's not going to end well. <laughs> you run on both track and cross country. What's your favourite? Do you have a favourite? Cross country. Definitely. I just Track I find boring. Just go round and round multiple times. Um, I will do it for speed and it's all is ran during summer. There's a dro there's road races, but I do first cross country like the mud and just the hills, and it's just it's good fun. It's a laugh. <laughs> so you've won many awards in your career so far. How does it feel to have won these awards at this point? That you've obviously put a lot of your own time into and practice hard. Really good. I mean, it just pays off the hard work and stuff. Um, it's really rewarding because you know you feel like you are doing it for a reason. I've not won that many recently, just like I said, injury and exams get in the way and stuff, but. I usually win the club championships, which is quite good. Uh, I think I probably missed that a couple of years, so that's good. So I'm hoping to do that again. That's November for cross country, so fingers crossed. <laughs> Next up, the Olympics, do you think? Oh, I mean, <laughs> a bit of a stepping stones first, but maybe one day. <laughs> As we previously mentioned, you run on track and you won silver in the 1500 metres at the National Track Championships in 2014. And you also competed in the Scottish Schools Track Championship finals which meant you got to race on the track at Hamden Park in the year Glasgow race to um, host the, the Commonwealth Games. What was that like? That was really fun. I, for the one at Hamden, so there's the heats at Grange Mess Stadium a few weeks before and then got to the final, it was a few weeks later and it was really good fun because they used it as practice for hosting the athletic. All right. So we had basket carriers, a, call, a proper call room, warm up track. It was really fun. I had like passes, so you couldn't get beyond certain points unless you had a pass. So it felt like you're really doing you're a it. part. It it's like really, you were there. At yeah, the games, yeah. It was really good fun. I mean, I, I didn't do that well, but I got a new PB, so it was good. So you coach as well under 11 You were saying yeah. before you, the show you coach. Would you encourage youngsters to get involved with the sport? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's good fun. It's good for social as well if you're not really going to compete. Uh, it's good for fitness. It's really easy to do. You don't need much equipment. All you need is basically a vest and spikes. We need to buy for other stuff but that's the two main things uh, and it's not that difficult to get into to be honest I mean you only don't have to put one foot in front of the other very quickly you know <laughs> <laughs> so 
So I definitely encourage young ones to do it. It's good fun, and they seem to enjoy the ones that I take. It's good because we don't do proper training with them because they're still young, can't really compete. Mm -hmm. So it's more fun and games with athletics, and they seem to really like it. I hope they like it. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, what is your favourite thing about the sport? Uh, it's probably accurate, like having like friends for it is good fun. I like the events because you get to meet other people through it and sometimes what some of the top Scottish athletes take part. Uh, I've met a few of the top ones. I've met Laura Muir and I've met I think Ailey Doyle, the 400 meter hurdler. She was at cross country. Uh, she wasn't competing but she was there so I got to meet her. That was really good. Um, yeah, I just, I like it. It's good fun and it's good way to keep fit. That's also my main thing as well. It's a good way to keep fit, yeah. Great. Well, Emma, thank you very much for coming on the show. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. We're There's been over 90 games so far this season and still not one referee has went to a pitch side monitor. Do you think they, they, they need them. to start? They, they, they do have them. They, they do have them. Have yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. You, you wouldn't know because they never yeah. use yeah. them. Yeah. But they do have them, uh, but the referees have been advised not to use them because uh, of time uh, mm. worries. Well, you just see that games over in Italy have been going up like nine minutes of added time and stuff. But the game. MLS are, sh are using the pitch side VR and it's working perfectly. Exactly. Right the kind of thing you should have is like a little bit of tech maybe for a referee, like a yeah, phone to me, or a tablet. Get, get, get like a get a something iPad or something for them to carry around to just, just, just look at the professional yeah. decision. The fourth official could hold an iPad. Or, even yeah, the or, referee, or a referee could have like a strapped iPad to his chest or something to just... <laughs> Actually <laughs> dropped it. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Just dropped it in the middle of the attack. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, guys. Just stick, like, stick it in rice, it's fine. <laughs> and, and I feel like even with monitors, all you need is like two or three looks, look at some different angles, make a decision. Not not go off of it's like yeah it's 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 like, like a telephone it's, it's like going off of what somebody tells yeah. you. A lot of decisions yeah. in football are subjective as well. It's like somebody one man's foul is them. not another man's foul. You get me. So and it's up to the it's up to the referee. Yeah. So I think the referee should be the person looking at it again. Yeah. So do you think it definitely should be as? There, there's somebody sitting in the booth going, look, we can't make a decision here, get over to that monitor as quickly as you can, look at three angles there, done. Yeah. I don't think they should say we can't make a decision, I think I they mean, should yeah. say they, something is wrong here, go and look at it and see what they're on the pitch. Yeah, I mean, still, still, still VAR v v v v doesn't make decisions. VAR v v v tells you what they see, and you as a referee make a decision yeah. based on <laughs> the, the, uh, the audible description of the visual thing that you saw. They need to ago. see it. That's yeah, they need to see it. Can't make decisions without seeing what's actually happening. No. Yeah. It's ridiculous. The thing is, you can't. People on about how oh, it's the guys in the booth making decisions. You can't have that either because the referee has a feel for the game and they understand the way the game is going. So you may see a wild challenge. It would just be a yellow card with the way the game is went. Whereas if it's all just done by the people in the booth that aren't in the stadium, they haven't been speaking with the players, they might go red card. Yeah. And if the guy's like, oh, I'll just listen straight to them, red card, and there have been three other challenges that have been on the same level, but they've just been bookings or talking to us. Yeah, because like, the booths they have as well, they're like miles away as well. They're in London. Yeah, yeah, London. Yeah, London. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that is a common thing. I, I, I think for, for the VR booths to be to be far away. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, it's only in the finals, isn't it, that they're like right outside the stadium. They're in like a medium. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the wee truck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they had that in the World Cup, though, I think. I think in the World Cup, yeah. there's a truck outside. Because it's really funny because referees get like dressed up in the referee outfit. <laughs> oh, I saw it. It was one of the World Cup, was it? Imagine that, like get dressed for work to go and sit and look at a ball. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, I think VR is used a lot better in the Champions League than the Premier League. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, I think this new league will be good for Scottish football. Uh, bring in a couple more. Personally, I don't, I don't agree with it. Uh, I don't think there's another another uh, demand for a European competition. The Champions League's lost this name anyway at this point. Uh, the Europa League's a much better competition. No, it's not. Liverpool didn't win their league, so technically they shouldn't have even been in the competition. I mean, looks furious. Oh, ben is yeah. furious, right? <laughs> well, you've got the, Man City won the league, therefore they are champions, therefore they Celtic should play the Champions League. Champions. Yeah. Even, uh, I'd, rather, I'd rather they took the champions from every single league in the world, even Armenian. Armenian to Spanish to Premier League, right? I'd rather they just took everyone, because that actually puts the meaning back into the Champions League. Because the Champions lost this meeting. It's fair enough. It's a fair enough point. But it worse when they get <coughs> the Super League that they want. Well. Exactly. I don't. Yeah, I don't think it's, it's not. I mean, there's not. there's a load to talk about different <coughs> leagues. But personally, I think this new league will help Scottish football grow a bit more and bring a couple more European nights. It's just then again, how are they going to plan it? Are you getting at European nights? Because what are the standard of the team is going to be? Exactly. Are you ever more waiting for example, could be for you? Maybe Hearts make European nights. Exactly. 
I don't think that's back, Connor. Are you just trying to tie that? Where are we done? You finished ninth years of European competition. Yeah. That's what we'll come to one day. That's what we'll come to in the Premier League. The fact right. that they get yeah, set as a seven so European many. places, yeah. that's unbelievable. It's a joke. They don't deserve seven yeah, European places. Do they not places. get more if a team wins the Champions yes, League? Yes, they get eight. They get eight or something. Yeah, yeah if a team wins the Cup, then team that finishes seventh doesn't get it, I think. Yeah. So you have like, I remember Hull got put in, and you know, Swansea and that. Burnley, it's unbelievable. Burnley. Like, it's, it's England so, would have even more places yeah, they, the I mean, Champions League and Europa League. The Europa League, again, I think Europa League, it'd be fair enough if they put maybe second, third and fourth. Maybe give second, and obviously England's got a much higher coefficient than other, uh, other countries, so you'd, mm-hmm. maybe you could argue that put another team in the Champions League, but there shouldn't be no more than two, and then there should be no more than maybe three English clubs in the Europa League. It just it makes it completely unfair. For I think you've team. got to think about TV money, though, because I see if you include bigger teams, so... Yeah, but it's like all about the TV four, money, is it? It shouldn't all it's be a big team. part. And it's a big part, yeah, but it shouldn't be. But you've got the four teams there, and you'll get better ties if you've got more teams involved. If you had I, under, I understand your point, but nah, I don't understand how people can win their their league and go into the first round of Champions League qualifying, like Dundalk in the League of Ireland. I'm not saying Irish football is anywhere near as good as English football, but do you not think they should get the same chance? Mm-hmm. Yeah, fair goal. enough. If you have won your league, you should be exactly. Yeah, you yeah, should be rewarded. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? You should be rewarded in yeah. the Champions League place. You don't have to go through all the qualification stages. Whereas if you win the English one, finish top four, you really need to qualify. It's like a monopoly for the bigger teams. Because <coughs> really I've, I've got to be honest, but the way Celtic has to go through their Champions League qualifiers during the su- summer, and the Rangers have to. It's a bit of a joke. Yeah, it's a joke. Hundred percent. It's a joke. Because teams don't get pre-season. They just go straight back at the competitive football. It's July. Let's start July. Yeah, with Bohemians as well. They're going into Europe next season they have to start I know they finished third in the Irish League and to be honest I don't think of the Irish League two European places anyway because I don't think it needs four but um, they have to go in right from the bottom qualification stages yet there's teams seventh in England that come in with something like two rounds to go which yeah. just gives them a huge advantage they don't even come in the playoff round yeah exactly like, yeah. think of Wolves you know what I mean Wolves have to I mean if Wolves were to play Bohemians we've already played two games or sort of four games actually and I've had to go through that. The Wolves have got a horrendously huge advantage over Bohemians. It's completely unfair the way it is, but again, it's just modern football. I think the team that it's most unfair is Ajax. Yeah. Obviously, reaching the semi finals last year, they get second or third qualifying now. Yeah, it was, yeah. It's a joke. Yeah, it is. And there's no way you're telling me that four English teams deserve to be in that position. Exactly. Liam, your greatest ever sporting achievement. What you I think? was a bit. Press for this one. I couldn't really think of why Orange Reds got individual team, so I went with Leicester City winning the Premier League in 2015-16. I just feel like it's something that you'll probably never see repeat again. A team coming from absolutely nowhere to go on and win. I think that's like a good one. Yeah. Premier League. I don't think that's going to happen. Anyway. We'll see it was a fantastic time. season. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Five thousand to one was their odds, which is you know quite good. So if anybody put but any I, money on that, they're never going to lose. Well, not the guy that does his bet on his club every year, but no, that's um, I think. Something like that does, it doesn't happen every day where you have a completely unfancy team coming from nowhere to win a division that is as competitive and it's got so many big teams with so much money in it as the English Premier League. And look at the players that done it with it's not exactly like. And Jamie uh, Bard, they managed, but yeah, uh, it's not like nominated a, for Balloon de Rose that year. Uh, it's not a team that's filled with top class talent, is it, really? It was the similar players that had, they had the year before. So that is my greatest sports show. The tough between that and um, the Barton nil, Hearts nil in the championship. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, I, I pumped for this one. I thought I'd just kind of beat it a wee bit. Would probably be, I was kind of stuck between two because it's Real Madrid between 1956 and 1960, winning like yep. the first five European Cups in a row. Yep. And like, football was just kind of different back then. Like, De Stefano up front it was unbelievable. Um, but like, games would end like 7-3. Six four all, all the time. Yeah. Um. Because I was reading about it earlier how like the Stad de Rem, I think it was some Stad Rene keeper, came out and said that if they hadn't have been beat by Real Madrid during then, then they would have been the top force in Europe. Um. But then also Real Madrid repeated that just before Liverpool won the Champions League. There just before that, was it how many years old in a row? Was it five years in a row they won that again? Real Madrid was yeah. th- three, four. Five. Yeah, three or four. Yeah. Yeah, three or four. So. Probably from 1960 to 1960, Real Madrid won all those European Cups in a row. Fantastic. They won at Hamden, didn't they? One of their yeah, they did. They beat, um, I think it was Frankfurt they beat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Another, another very, very quick thing. My granddad knows someone who ran the line in that game as a linesman. He has, I think it's like a silver plated watch or something. Yeah. Like a pocket watch that the, the Real Madrid gave to the officials in that game. 
So that'll be worth quite a lot of money now, I'd imagine. Yeah. It's really, I've seen it a couple of times, it's really impressive. Yeah, yeah. to highlight kind of like how good they were, it was, um, I think just before Frank Flutter played Rangers, I think, and they absolutely hammered Rangers, and then Real Madrid went and absolutely hammered Frankfurt. So, and that was when Rangers were one of the top, top teams in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> to thank everybody for listening again. I hope the new format has been a bit better. Thank you it's to Emma fun. Gilmore, who was our guest this week. Buddy. And the camera, hello. And the camera, if hey. you're watching <laughs> on the podcast highlight show, thank you very much for, listen- for watching. Listening yeah. to